We wanted to talk to the Justice Minister, Amy Adams, about the broader issue of cannabis in New Zealand. She declined and her office referred us to the Associate Health Minister, Peter Dunn. Now, he didn't want to discuss the poll results. He didn't want to discuss the laws because that's a justice issue, not a health one. But he was prepared to discuss the issue of why medicinal cannabis is so very hard to obtain in New Zealand. And I began by suggesting that the current list of approved products, which consists of one, Sativex, wasn't very comprehensive. No, I don't think it is. But the reality is that, unfortunately, at the pharmaceutical grade, there's only about five products worldwide, two of which are currently in testing, one of which is approved, Sativex, in New Zealand, and the other two are available, one in the Caribbean only and one in Germany only. So it's not a satisfactory situation, but part of the difficulty there is uh, manufacturers don't want to um, produce products and trial them in New Zealand. So how are they making this work in a place like California? Well, we they're, they're moving to the second tier, which is a whole lot of what we would regard as uh, non-pharmaceutical grade medicines. Uh, but the situation in New Zealand under the New Zealand law, and it's been the case for a very long time, and it applies to all medicines, is where a medicine has not been approved through the normal process, then doctors can prescribe that uh, on application to the minister to approve that prescription. But doesn't that put the ball in the doctor's court? In other words, oh, yes, it does. Do, that, so they does, have sorry. to go to the ministry and provide ev ev evidence of efficacy, of the scientific basis for the likely success of the drug. This is an enormous amount of work for the doctor to no, do. It's not, wouldn't, it, wouldn't it be better for the ministry simply to extend the list of approved products? No, look, if you were ta just, just put cannabis to one side for a moment. In any other area, you would expect a doctor to prescribe, who is prescribing a medical product to be aware of its efficacy, to be aware of its toxicity, to be aware of the dosage required, and to know what it is they were prescribing. Cannabis is no different in that sense. All medicines that are registered under the Medicines Act have to go through a clinical trial process. They are then signed off by MedSafe. I can't sign anything off just on a whim. One product only in New Zealand has gone through that, that is Sativex. There is therefore the capacity, which I just explained, for non-registered uh, products, non-pharmaceutical, sorry, non-registered pharmaceutical products to be approved on a case-by-case -case basis by the minister because there is no other regulation available for them. And that, that's, that, that's the reality. Minister, you gave a great speech. It was acclaimed in New York. And it was widely quoted and tweeted and everyone said, well done, Peter Dunn. And you talked about the need to be bold. And I just wonder where your boldness is. Well, my, my boldness is that I am seeking solutions. But John, I'm not a pharmaceutical manufacturer. I can't manufacture products. I can't suddenly decide that this product is safe and therefore will make it available in New Zealand in a way that we would do for no other medicine. What I can do and will do and am doing is encourage the medical profession, because everyone says this is a medical issue, I agree, to become more aware, to become more knowledgeable about what's available and to therefore seek to inform the discussion. What is in fact happening at the moment is that most of them are running a mile from becoming involved because they see it as all too complicated. That is not in the interest of their patients. But I can't overrule them. I'm not a doctor. I don't seek to be a doctor. And people keep telling me, this is a medical, not a political issue. I agree entirely. OK. What needs to happen, Minister, so that we don't have people who are terminally ill self-medicating? Why well, don't I think we... Two things, I think two things need to happen. Uh, firstly, I think the clinical trial processes that I referred to earlier need to be completed. Uh, there are prospects of some trials getting underway in Australia at the end of this year, but they're probably 18 months to two years from completion. There is one application, I'm just not familiar with the detail, for a trial being considered in New Zealand at the moment, but beyond that, nothing. So that's the first step that we need to make progress on. The second step is, I think, for the medical profession uh, to become much more actively involved in the advice that it's able to offer patients uh, so that patients aren't put in a difficult position of literally having to go searching on the net for something that they think might suit their needs and then go to their doctor and say, look, I've discovered this product from wherever. Okay, can and I pick you up? put in a very difficult position. Okay, I think they can... need to upskill themselves rapidly. Okay, so if they do upskill themselves, what are they able to do? So I go well, to my GP, if, if, I am if, terminally if, ill, or my 
oncologist. What is my oncologist able to do to provide me with medicinal cannabis for pain relief? Well, the first thing the oncologist will have to do is to decide whether or not that's an appropriate treatment. And if they do, then what form and what product and then how it can be sourced. That's not my job to t determine that. My and how job long might that process take, typically? Well, that, look, I can't tell you how long it would take a doctor to decide what a patient's condition is and what they need to have. Prescribed. And get the appropriate approvals. But we're well, talking all months. All I can say with regard to the approvals is that the two cases that have come my way have been approved within the hour of arriving on my desk.